Well, hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm finally back with another good old kitchen counter thrift haul. Now, I usually say at this time, look at all that stuff, but I don't have a lot of stuff. I'm still going through boxes. I have a lot in storage in New Jersey, but it hasn't really been safe for me to go to uh, my mother's home to get those items. So we're going to wait a little while longer. Hopefully I'll be over there on Mother's Day and I'll be able to bring some more things back to Philadelphia uh, to sell. Some of these things you've seen before, some you haven't. And let's just jump right into it. But first of all, I'm not having any coffee today. My snack is homemade punch, which is really just, oh, that cheap stuff and I doctored up with a little ginger ale. And a dish of salted peanuts. You'll notice that this is in the Riviera pattern made by Homer Lachlan. Very 1930s geometric art deco, right? And then this beautiful tumbler is designed by Arthur Nash for the Libby Company. I have two of these. Took me a while to figure out what they were. Arthur Douglas Nash, I think was the, was the name of the designer. So a very Art Deco snack this afternoon for me. All right, everything that you see is currently up for sale in the old curiosity shop. And only one of the items here, let's see, yes, one thing has actually already been sold. So I should pull that from the, from the lot. And that's the Ellie Smith black glass double-handled cup here. Some people call it a loving cup or a wedding cup. These were, I think L.E. Smith made these by the millions. You know, they made these in several different forms. Sometimes the base is circular instead of square. The rim is not always crimped or ruffled like this. Sometimes it's not. And the dancing figures on the front, if we'll focus in here, we have two females frolicking around in their Grecian outfits. And uh, some of these actually have a man and a woman instead of two women. Now, this is two women on the front, and I'm selling this um, because I found another one that's larger than this, and it actually has a man and a woman on it, and that's the one um, I'm going to keep. It has nothing to do with the combination of men and women. I just like it because it's uh, larger. So this one has already sold. Um, but I'll, I'll keep my eyes out for some more. Ellie Smith made, oh my goodness, a ton of black glass. They're not the only ones that made it. But the way Westmoreland is known for milk glass, Ellie Smith is very well known for its uh, black or amethyst glass, which was all the rage in the late 20s through the mid 30s. Two dancing women, scantily, well, they're not really scantily clad, but they're out in a lot of wind and they're doing a lot of dancing. So I'm not sure what's going on. Chase Candles, these great big things. Uh, not the Chase Brass Company. These would have been used at banquets, weddings, 
uh, wedding anniversaries, retirement parties, you know, that kind of thing. And so I have six of these. We can see that they're calling them light green and they really have a nice minty, minty green, almost a jadeite green color. And so these are everlasting and there's uh, six of them. The candles are, twelve, are a whopping 15 inches tall. We'll see if I can get one out of here without, with just one hand. Okay, and well, I pulled out the one that has, well, that's all right. I need a tripod. Okay, so these are, this is the down in the candle holder, 15 inches long. When we get to the top, this one actually does have a candle in it with a wick on it. See that? Let me pull this apart. Okay, there we go, I'm back. So you unscrew the end, this rod comes out which is spring-loaded and you place the dripless candle on the inside. This is, this is a metal case, you see, and then as the candle burns downward, the spring-loaded mechanism here, you see, pushes up on the candle so it will stay, it will stay lit for hours and hours without having to attend to it. And you can actually go online and buy these skinny little dripless candles. They do make the replacements for them. So dating to the 1950s, 60s, here are six of them in this really pretty green color. More of a mint green, I guess, than a jadeite. A mouse trap that probably dates to about 1900, a little bit after that, possibly. I don't find any marks on it. It could have... Sometimes there'll be an embossed mark on the top of the maker of these traps and I, I couldn't see it So we're just going to say a generic mouse trap and uh, it's all spring-loaded and the poor little thing um, Sticks his head in there to eat some cheese or lick some peanut butter and wham uh, I kind of like mice. I grew up in a house an old house and in the winter time mice would come in and we just always had mice But that's what a cat is for so uh, I wouldn't suggest using this, but for those who'd like to know, all the springs are still springy. And that's just, uh, make a nice display piece, I guess. From the very, very latter part of the 19th century, but probably more like 1910, 1915 or so, is a porcelain comb box or container made of porcelain, probably made in the United States. There's no mark on the bottom listing country of origin, so this was probably part of a larger porcelain dresser set or toilet set, you know, with the big wash basin and bowl and all the other accoutrements that would be needed um, for before indoor plumbing and bathrooms. And this is in really good condition, and we can see that the comb would be placed inside of here after the lady of the house is finished grooming herself. It will stay nice and dry and clean with the lid on top. It's really pretty and you know you could really do a lot with this. Uh, so, and this is in really fantastic condition. There's crazing on the glaze of course, typical, but it's not chipped and it's not cracked. I really like the handle as well. That right there, okay, I guess we'll call that a chip. Um, it's more or less a little sort of a flake in the, in, the, in the glaze, more so than a chip, but it's the size of the head of a pin, but we will say that it's a flea bite. Sleepy Baby you saw last year. I'll crank Sleepy Baby up in a few minutes and we'll see him do his thing. The Similac mug was made by the McKee uh, pottery company here in the United States probably made in the uh, late 50s, 60s, maybe even early, early 70s. I could look it up to see when Ross joined. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll just go ahead and say late 60s or 70s probably. And it looks a lot like the anchor... That way, it looks like it's a glass anchor hocking de-handled Fire King mug, doesn't it? But it's pottery. And if you collect McCoy, you turn it upside down, and that, that looks like a McCoy bottom. And indeed, these were made by McCoy. And um, so, if you're a fan of baby formula, that's for you. 
back there, you will remember those. They are the two uh, Westmoreland glass. Wait a minute, is it Westmoreland? Yes. The two glass shelf supports made by the Westmoreland Glass Company in, excuse me, 1913, and we're able to really pinpoint the date because these have patent applied for embossed on them, and I understand Westmoreland didn't get the patent, and they had, and they removed that uh, that patent name or that embossed. Well, where is it? Right there. Can you see it? And so I have two of very different sizes, uh, so you, you couldn't really balance a shelf on these, but you could do a lot of other things with them in terms of display, and I'm hoping that these will sell to an antique store display person, such as an ice cream shop, or a jewelry store, apothecary, you know, that kind of thing, where they just need extra glass supports. And you'd have two of the same size, a glass shelf would rest on this, and you could move these any way that you wanted and make the display uh, any way that you chose. I think this is a uh, Jeanette piece, I forget, but I think it's Jeanette, it's depression glass, it's in a quilted, sort of quilted diamond optic pattern, and it dates to the 30s. It's got uranium in it, so that'll glow under a black light. Just a nice little depression glass vase. Okay. Yes, I'm getting rid of some things that are green. Uh, as you can see, you know how much I love green. And then uh, finally over here is a beautiful imperial glass bowl. And I hope you can see the iridescence on this. Probably made about 1910, 1915. And this is in the wide panel pattern. But what attracted me to this initially and the reason why I purchased it is because it's not carnival glass and it is not stretch glass. Imperial made both. Carnival glass, as you know, almost always has fancy embossed patterns on it. Birds, grapes, uh, peacock tails, you name it. This has no embossed pattern on it except for the star on the bottom. So this isn't really considered a carnival glass pattern even though it's got the iridescence. But it's also not a piece of stretch glass because we do not see any of the onion skin. Okay, and you've seen me talk and show you examples of stretch glass before, so we won't go into too much detail on that. Stretch glass would have been uh, f fired or pressed in the mold, sprayed with the mineral spirits and uh, mineral, mineral uh, the, the chemicals, and then it would be refired. And as it cools, it then gives a sort of onion skin or it leaves stretch marks. This doesn't have that, but it does have the iridescence. All the colors of the rainbow, it is clear crystal glass. And in case you're interested, it has the imperial mark in the bottom, which is kind of hard to see, but there it is. You see that? Now, I remember when I showed this the first time at the store, somebody saw that line right there and said, Oh, Scott, you missed a crack. Now, it's not a crack. It's an inclusion, not a straw mark. And I know I promised to talk about that, and I never did it. But this piece is chip-free and crack-free. The line that you see in the bottom is what's called an inclusion, and you'll often see that on this kind of glass but what's nice is the mold lines uh, have been completely polished out of this. So even though it was pressed in a mold, we don't have mold lines around uh, the perimeter of it at all. Just a really pretty center bowl, which um, could be used for fruit. You could float flowers in it or serve coleslaw. All right, let me put the cell phone down and I'm going to crank up sleepy baby and see what happened. Well, let me talk about it first and then we'll, 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 we'll exit this video and watch the baby toss and turn. See him toss about, it says. Late 50s, early 60s, made in Japan. Nice original box. Okay, we pull baby out. And he's in really good condition. 
Uh, there's his Japan sticker on his bum. You can see it right there. Uh, someone might want to iron or flat stretch out his little onesie pajamas here. They're a little wrinkled from being in the box. But what we'll do is crank him up and uh, we'll see what he does. Okay, everyone, I am Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, thanking you for watching. And if you see anything you like, it's all for sale in Scott's Old Curiosity Shop. The link to the eBay store is in the description box right underneath of this video. Stay well, and I'll see you next time. So long for now.